to round four of the Keyforge Discovery Kit Tournament sealed deck here at 401 Games. I'm Victor on behalf of Travis. Round four, we've got Jem on the left, Lucas on the right. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Archon Protruding Orpheum. Uh, and then we have Griffith the Explorer of Horticulture on the right. I think this is our... Correct me if I'm wrong, this might be our first uh, Mars deck on camera this, today, on Lucas's deck. A lot of Dees, actually. There's, there's been a lot of Dees. I think almost every single deck we've uh, we featured on camera today has had Dees in it. Looks like he's going first, going to start with a uh, Succubus. Two copies of those in his deck. Bait and switch is going to be a card to look out for on Lucas's side, um, especially if your opponent doesn't know uh, know about it. it. Could be a potential blowout. Uh, Chem, on the other hand, is going to start out with uh, discarding Gateway to Dees, playing a succubus of his own. So with both succubuses in play, it's going to be interesting to see if Lucas is willing to to uh, take the one minus one card draw hit. It looks like a quick pass, actually. Uh, back to Sem. Starts with a ghostly hand. Steals some amber. Then he's going to play a shadow self and then a miasma just to get one amber. It's back to Lucas, who uh, fires off a quick lights out. Lights out, always a good choice when uh, your opponent has multiple creatures from multiple houses in play. He's going to have to spend a couple of turns to get back. Actually... <laughs> if I wasn't mistaken, this is almost like a mirror match because Shadow Self, Succubus, both players. So both both decks featuring Dees and Shadows, two very heavy control, uh, two heavy control houses. But the uh, the third house are different for each. Brobnar. So Brobnar, Dees, uh, Shadows is actually going to be a interesting to see how this plays out because it's a super control heavy build. Yeah. Of course, some of that. Depends on the order in which you draw your cards. But with a quick uh, call of Brobnar, Jem, Jem just uh, firing off a bunch of events for no effect just to gain the amber. It looks like he wants to... Uh, Did we confirm how to pronounce his name? Yeah, he said it was Jem. Jem? Yeah. As we mentioned, that bait and switch. Just a discard of the bait and switch. No, he, uh, did he just discard it or yeah. play it? I mean, they were at the same amount of amber, so it would have been a discard. Okay. I mean, he could have played it, but it wouldn't have had any effect. It follows it with a ghostly hand. Brings him to six. Yeah. I now realize that I do not like these tokens because they're very hard to read on screen. You remember what I called them, Travis? No, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I uh, blocked that from my memory. <laughs> They're stones of some sort. Yeah. You know, Shadow Self's been a card that I've been impressed by. Like, I thought it was garbage when I first played it. I think it's because I tried to attack with it when I first played right. with it. Uh, I read it wrong. I thought it just didn't take any damage while attacking, but... Yeah. Still, very good card because it still reaps, protects your uh, your weaker shadow guys. It's what's allowed. Uh, it's what's allowed that succubus to stay on the field for a while, actually. So Nexus uh, reaping there. Lucas with a gateway to Dees. No, so just remembering. Because the artifact was used in Lucas's turn, yep. it stays exhausted. He, He's Jem exhausted. won't be able to use it unless Lucas does a non-Nexus turn. Yeah, Nexus one of those cards is just to be a random blowout, depending on the kind of artifacts your opponent has. Oh, I've never seen the Rogue Order be Ogre before. It's kind of interesting. So, Dees on Jem's side plays a Control the Weak. Uh, don't know what house he chose. Probably not Shadows. 
Sucky best with some shaffles. What does shaffles do again? At the end of your turn, your opponent at right. your loses one. Yep. Did uh, I thought Lucas only had seven uh, amber? I'm not gonna. Did that prevent that? Yeah. Well, you should have lost one from shaffles, I think. Right. Gonna trade sucky bar. Well, it's a case of like if they don't catch it, right? Like from these things, sometimes the pace of play happens too fast that we can't necessarily catch it. They're talking about it. So. All right, never mind. Looks like they caught it anyway. So in that case, I think they just lose an amber, right? I mean, he could still forge a key if he was at seven going to six. So how did so? What was the correction of the board state there? There is not. There is no correction. Okay. He was just like he, w he realized he would rather have tried to trade with shaffles. Right. But then they also realized with the shadow self. Still, he would have rather do do shaffles uh, and keep the shadow self alive. Is that a punch? Yeah. Nexus gets punched. Frees up his uh, gauntlet of command. Crump onto a flank. And uh, trades away the succubus, so it's uh, going to be a clear board for for Lucas. Chem on five, looks like five amber, I think. And uh, Lucas remembers to lose the uh, Shaffles amber. loses one. The Chuff Ape. Enders plays stunned. When you fight a reap, you can sacrifice another friendly creature to fully heal Chuff Ape. It's also got taunt, so... Man, every, all the Mars stuff comes into play stunned. All the good stuff. That's fine, but I mean, you're kind of okay with a big damage soap taunt. Yeah, I Even if so. you never ready it. Uh, that's true. I mean, Yixlik's Dominator was another one that I uh, underestimated because it came into play stunned. But he does use Squawker to unstun it. Basically ready it so he can unstun it uh, when, he, when he activates it that turn. Here's Chen with Magda. He's going to steal those two amber. As long as he can keep that alive for one turn, he can use those two amber to forge a key before uh, Lucas has a chance to steal that back. Well, he's got a shadow self, so he should be able to keep protect it from most things. I mean, Lucas does two, have two hand of Dece, so Well, I see a gateway to Deece in his hand, too. The shadow self is vulnerable to that yeah. hand because it's uh, not a flank creature. Well, I would just fire off a gateway here. Yeah, definitely a gateway now. Yeah, fire off the gateway, steal back two amber. This is an easy, easy gateway, I think. There we go. See, that, that's an example of a good gateway, I think. Sure. Well, I mean, it was, so, it was so lopsided in terms of the boards. It's when it's like similar numbers of creatures that it gets a little bit more dicey. I feel like Brodnar is going to be the play here after forging your first key. You get to play out a guy and then you get to gauntlet it right away. Dees is appealing too. There's a succubus and a charrette and a dominator bottle. But no, he's going to go with the Brobnar play instead. Uh, I'd maybe try to save the charrette for a point where it's going to turn off a potential key forge. Yeah. Okay, Fire Spitter takes down the succubus. Grenade, Snib is a, uh, there as a sort of emergency valve. If his opponent ever gets to check again, he can just run it into a, a bigger creature and uh, make his opponent lose too. Soft Landing makes a Tunk come to play ready. Tunk, very scary if you have other Mars creatures in your hand. He's going to start off by killing off the, uh, the Fire Spitter. 
with the tongue. Let's see if he has a Mars creature to heal it up. He does not. Four is an awkward damage point because that grenade snip can't exactly kill it with that one armor on Tunk. I think uh, calling Dees might just be the best play here. I like calling Dees here because even if you play out the Succubus, well, provided Lucas doesn't, Lucas doesn't have another Mars creature, you can uh, force a trade on uh, Tonk versus Succubus. Does call Dees, plays out the Charette and the Succubus, giving Lucas two appealing targets for the Tonk to attack. And there's a Dominator Bobble. Zizix the Many on uh, Lucas's side. That's the guy that gets bigger when he reaps uh, with the ad addition of archiving. So, very good, very good creature if you get to untap with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you can let that go. You really got to try to. Yeah, if I kill if I now. was uh, Chem, I would probably. Uh, Interesting. No. Attack it. Okay. Smat oh, Stunning Tongue. Interesting. He might have a way to deal with... Yeah. Because he does have the gauntlet, right? He can just yeah. use it to fight with uh, Smash. Well, fight Zizix, yeah. Pretty easy play there. War Drummer to return Smash. Oh, yeah. Smash and the Snib. Double stunning the Tongue, but doesn't really do anything. I think there was just talk about like basically the placement of the creatures on the battle line. Because the war drummer had to come down first, uh, the uh, the other two creatures had to go on the uh, the outside of uh, of the war drummer, the charrette. Pawn sacrifice on Lucas's turn is going to take out the grenade snip. <clears throat> Followed up with a Seeker Needle. Seeker Needle is going to deal the last damage to that charrette uh, whenever he calls shadows again. So after the first... Uh, oh. So he just played that, that shadows guy that steals the artifact. Now, the... When he steals the artifact, is it there permanently, even after um, even after the creature leaves play? Do you know? Which one? It's a snack lifter. Take control of an enemy artifact while under your control. Yeah, it, it stays under your I control even after, control. yeah. Okay. The rest of the effect does not happen, though? Like, it does not that get the house restriction? Right. Bunch of D stuff coming out on Lucas's side. Lucas is starting to fall a little bit behind here in the race. So yeah, I missed a, a rules interaction. When Smash came in again, he would have had to have put a stun on one of his own creatures. Because there was not another stunned creature in play. Or another unstunned creature. You have to put it on an unstunned creature? Is you that how it, you can't put, You can't stun a stunned creature. Okay. So I guess the what he did was he... But he could have sequenced his turn differently. So yeah. he put the stun on the squib. So when it bounced, it got rid of it. Right. Anyways. Should pay attention to where we are in the game now instead of looking at history. 
What just happened? Bunch of stuff went back to his hand. Ah, okay. Hysteria. Nice. So I guess he gets he gets to play out everything again. He's got the smash in his hand again for when uh, Lucas starts playing out another creature. Smash and War Drummer, both. I mean, I'm not sure about the play. No, you don't think so? I guess, I guess yeah, I guess it's enough of a board advantage restore. I like it. I mean, now Lucas has got to play around those. These cards again. Discard his gateway, so willing to. Yeah, he does. He doesn't need a gateway here. He's got. He also has two in his deck, so he he has enough individual control elements in his in his hand right now. Um, that unless Lucas just starts barfing out Martian creatures, I don't think he needs to worry about playing gateway. Got a mother gun, John Smith, and you look Mega Mouth coming out for him. Oh, steals the lash. Brutal. Actually, considering that, I mean, that was very good for him. So he tries, he tries to, uh, he tries to attack the John Smith, but it's got elusive. And he's gonna follow up with a ghostly hand. That's gonna put him in check. Ghostly Hand, one of those cards where 99% of the time you're playing it just to gain the two amber. Very few times do I ever actually see it uh, uh, steal an amber from your opponent. So Lucas definitely going to probably call, call Mars again. Is that a, I think that's a Shatterstorm in his hand. So what I would do here, yeah, you Mother Gun first, kill that guy. Artifact still stays in play on your side. I would reap twice, then cast, then play Shatterstorm. That is a Shatterstorm, right? Yeah. So, Ray Gun. Ray Gun's going to deal one damage to each Martian creature in play. Yeah. So he's yeah he's going to reap and then use John Smith. He shouldn't have bothered to. Uh, Shouldn't have bothered using the mother gun that way because the ray gun's going to do two damage, right? Right. I guess you have to choose another creature. Shatterstorm now. So that makes him lose six amber. Right? Two, two to six, is it? Yep. Right. Yep. Then he's going to reap again. Kill off the Shrek, get the three back. This is a huge swing. Wow. You know, every time today that I've seen Shatterstorm played, it's always been a blowout. Yeah. It's crazy. And he draws a lights out. Lights out. Lights out, very good card when you're bouncing two separate house creatures. And Lucas has got two copies of them. Chem uh, is going to respond by playing Smash to stun the John Smith. It's a good idea, preventing the double tap on the Mega Mouth. Still has a gauntlet, so he can uh, he can get ready and kill the Mega Mouth if he needs to. Yeah. It's one of the things about this game is that if you if you're if you're familiar with other card games, uh, you can actually just you can just forget that you have to play out your creatures in a specific order, like you know, on one flank or the other. 
Yeah, I, I just got myself confused by how uh, Jem had a seeker needle without it in his deck. I, you saw it though, right? Well, no, no, I didn't see the first. <laughs> I didn't see the first deck. I didn't see the first neck left or take it. Okay. Uh, so back to Mars again. I think that was a Mother Gun activation. That was his only play of the turn. It's not good. I think here you just called Brobnar and Reap a bunch of times. Lights out the play on Lucas. Returns Flame Spitter and Succubus. Yep. Always a good idea to split up those houses when you return cards. Doesn't choose to play the other one, though. But he, oh, okay, he actually does. This is awkward, right? Because you don't want to return War Drummer or Smash. No. Yeah, War, oh, that's super awkward. Yeah, it's no choice that he. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, he has to do two creatures here. It's yeah, it's a tough decision because, I mean, if you don't do it, then your opponent just um, just calls Brobnar and reaps a bunch of times. But now, with the War Drummer, he gets to return both smashes to his hand and play them out again. Stead calls his calls Dees. He's gonna play Control the Weak. Do you know what house he played? Okay. I'm gonna guess he called Dees. Dees the lash. He's gonna block Lucas from uh, yeah from forging a forging next turn. turn. Silver two to reap again. That's gonna put uh, Chem in check. Lucas does have an Umbra in his hand, or not an Umbra, rather an Ur Urchin. Urchin. Yeah. Urchin steals back, takes him back out of check. Naughty the thief, I think, steals another one. Yeah. Yep. Shadow self reaps. So now, even with the lash, that's gonna let him forge a key, I think. I like calling Brobnar here, I think. Now well, goes for Shadow instead. That's good because uh, that uh, Seeker Needle damage goes under the under the Elusive. Gives it an Amber 2. Magda the Rat. A lot of back and forth in this game. Yep. They've been uh, they've been calling each other in and out of check. Oh, there he goes. Lights out. Gets the bounce both. I didn't see what that. I do not know what that was. Shadow self, maybe? No. Maybe. I don't know. What Shadow self makes makes sense uh, next to Magda the Rat anyway. So. Yeah, it is Shadow Self. Chem's using uh, Orzov sleeves, which seems very thematic with shadows. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Orz, uh, shadows is like the Orzov of Keyforge because they just steal amber, like like draining life. If everyone, anyone remembers the extort ability from the old uh, Ravnica set, uh, a lot of this shadow stuff feels very, very similar to that in theme. Lucas reminding Chem again that he needs to pay attention to the placement order. Silvertooth is already in play, so yeah, he has to be on the inside. Yeah, I do. I do mess that up a lot. Uh, like, it, it, especially in the heat of the game, like it's very easy to forget forget that placement matters. Terror, Library of the Damned. 
So here comes uh, Chem's second key. With him being very close to threaten a third. I think you call, if you call shadows here, you reap a bunch of times. Brobnar is appealing two, I think. So loot the bodies. I know it. Well, kill the terror. I mean, Dees had a lot of activations, plus you have the Dominator Orb. That's true. Or Bobble, sorry. I mean, and Lucas has been under the under the uh, oppress oppressive uh, thumb of those two succubuses too, right? Yeah. Succubi, rather. Reaping. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, Lucas would do anything. Because the, the bait and switches were gone, the Shatterstone was So Lucas is conceding here because he has no way to steal the uh, Amber back. Yeah, early, yeah. Uh, there was, after the after the first keys were forged on both sides, like, it was, uh, it was a lot of back and forth, but eventually, even with the uh, gateway to Dece, like, Chem just built that board, it was very hard to deal with, even with a bunch of spot removal, and just became a straight-up uh, reaping race. 